Hello, hey, and welcome to this latest episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Miss Jess, Rushed Vibes, rushing in the flesh, in the audio, in the video, any other O that is available, and my co-host here, Mr. David. Dave, D Rush, Rush Vibes, Rushing. In the flesh and in the audio. In the building. In the building. For episode number 10. What? Of Rush Vibes. That's right, baby. 10. 10 episodes old. Wow, look at us. Only 90 episodes to our 100th episode. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do. Seems like it's around the corner, right? I feel like we should pick miscellaneous miles, milestone numbers, but they shouldn't be like typical milestone numbers, like a number that ends in zero or five. It should be like episode 13, we celebrate with something. Unlucky number 13? Uh, 13 has been lucky for us. Our firstborn is born on Friday the 13th. Are so. you sure we consider that? Like- <laughs> it hurt, but, you know, she's... She's pretty cool, so I'm not too upset about that. I I will classify it as lucky. So, um, before you get going, uh oh, I just wanted to say uh, that this is a really big accomplishment. Ten weeks straight of actually nine weeks because we released two episodes in one week. Nine weeks straight of Rush Vibes content. Um, Other than our relationship. I don't know if I've ever been as committed to anything as <laughs> as I have this podcast. So, uh, if there's anybody out there watching who's got the, the itch. got that tick or the itch to do something, but you're like, man, I don't really, you could, do I don't it. know, just do it. You could do it. Just start. Pull just a Nike. Do it. Be like Nike and just just do it. Just get the ball rolling, and then it it, it gets easier. I I promise. Well, um, high five and kudos to you because this is kind of your initiative yeah but in terms it, of getting everything together and perfect because if this was my podcast i'd be recording it into my iphone and, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that and you guys would way. just get the audio that you got you hear kids screaming in the background <laughs> you'd hear you know the renters across the street in their loud car oh my god you hear me cooking like you just would hear all the noise that comes with life um but david's very particular about the audio and just perfecting this um and i'm sure it's still not even as perfect as he would like it so no. uh you definitely can do it but uh i do applaud you for the effort for which you have put forth in accomplishing 10 episodes so he's probably gonna like start a production company and start producing stuff and actually get into movies which is part of why i married him because i thought i'm getting a little misty out here. i I'm thought he would uh be in hollywood and here we are still in charlotte north carolina would about to do my my van jones oh my gosh please <laughs> it's, it's, you, this is so so unnecessary you. no it's uh yeah it's definitely been a big huge undertaking i'm learning how to do a lot of the stuff on the fly uh one thing i have known about podcasts as someone who listens i only listen to a handful but i listen to them religiously i just know that if the audio is off i'm just kind of immediately mm-hmm. turned off so that's definitely probably the most important thing uh, other than uh, the video, obviously, is um, I think we were just going to when we when we first had the idea, we were just going to proceed as an audio podcast. And it wasn't until I just kind of started doing some research. And then, of course, we're in a pandemic. So everyone's at home now. So whereas people would listen to podcasts on the commute to work or on the commute back from work, more people are at home. So they may be more inclined to watch a podcast on Spotify or YouTube as opposed to just listening to it. You can watch it on Spotify. I believe Spotify has has a video feature. Yeah, are we on Spotify? Video? We are. We do not have a video. Okay, I was going to say I didn't know video podcast available on Spotify. I will say in of terms of like the the video, I didn't know we were doing video until like he set up the camera one day, and I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, all the all the uh, test episodes we recorded were we were just upstairs in our in our bedroom. Yeah, our master bed master bedroom closet. So I thought we were just going to keep it rolling. Yeah, and then it was like, oh. You got to look nice. You're gonna be you're gonna be on the camera. I wasn't ready for yeah. that. Um, and you do a, and you do a great job every week of coming out. Looking, thanks. Looking fly. You got I, your hair. I got your hair out. Yeah. Remember when I mentioned yeah. the COVID inches, y'all? These yeah. are. And this isn't even good because my hair is is so 
naturally grown out and hasn't really been blown out by a professional in so long that it doesn't remember how to blow like it's not trained to be straight anymore so this morning i blew it out and it looked really it was big but it looked really good and i took a picture of it a boomerang and i put on instagram and then as the day progressed it like started to morph into a hairstyle that i didn't do so i put it up in a ponytail and solace was like oh our oldest solace um she she's five and she said oh mommy you put your hair up and i said yeah she said it was getting in your face wasn't it i said yeah she said oh i understand that so um yeah it it was it was just become it it multiplied but these are the covid inches that i talked about in like episode four maybe uh these are, these are my covid inches right and those now. are his covid inches these are my covid inches um i need a trim badly but I, it was nice to have my hair free and and just out so yeah. so yeah this is this is this is me today i don't know how we gonna look next week we don't we don't hey, we're gonna we're gonna, we're we're gonna, gonna roll with we're it. gonna see about that rolling we're gonna see rolling. That. Uh, speaking of of the podcast, circling back a little bit, um, I did want to give a shout out to C Tucker four thirty. I yes. believe on on YouTube. Yes. Um, I I don't believe either one of us know. I uh, tried to investigate who you were, so I went to your YouTube who you page, are, um, and I was hoping you had videos and stuff. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure our, it out. Our most frequent and dedicated and loyal you. commenter and 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 viewer, I would assume. And because all of the comments have come on topics that were later on the podcast, I'm like, oh wow, somebody actually listened to the yes. and watched and the, the whole thing. And then has thoughtful interaction with thoughtful us. responses. So we appreciate you, whoever you are. Keep watching, yeah. keep listening. Feel free to let us know who you are. But it's kind of nice. <laughs> no, you don't have to it's let us know. Nice if we don't know you, you don't have to let us that's, know who you that's are. True. That's true. But fine. we do appreciate you, and we see you. And if this ever turns into like a live studio broadcast, like there will be like with an <laughs> audience, there will be a special seat always no. saved for you. And if you want to stay anonymous, you can stay anonymous. We won't know which seat it is, but like you're you're etched in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you know now. There will be no <laughs> rush vibes no in front live of a live audience. Nah. Nah, but we if Say we ever do now. like a if we ever do like a Patreon or something, she can get her stuff for free. Or they can I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I'm assuming, assuming you're assuming that you're a woman. I apologize, but um, you can get your stuff for free. And if we and when we no. have a live studio audience and turn this into like a Harpo production, rushed vibes production, you will have your your seat. You can just come to the to the bouncer, you'll be on the list. You know, we don't even need to know who you are. If you want to keep this relationship continuously anonymous, we can do that. But you know, that's that's what your loyalty has gotten you. So we appreciate you. We appreciate yeah. you. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, mention something that happened today. Um, yeah, I went out this morning. I had to uh, <clears throat> had to make a run to the uh, Goodwill. And then I, I thought I was going to go to the to the county dump, but I actually didn't end up going. So I went to Goodwill. You know, I, I did my deed. So what about the stuff that's in the trunk? Uh, those or are hangers. Just sleep? Oh, I th- they I don't take hangers. I thought they. I was like, hey, Goodwill man. doesn't take hangers. No, I was surprised. So it's part of my story. Sorry. So uh, you know, I went to Goodwill, and you know, I organized everything because you know they have bins in which they they separate stuff. And I, I found this out the first time I went to Goodwill. There was a dude. I think his name was Jerry or Larry. Sorry. Uh, he was like, you know, we got your housewares, you know, we got your clothes, you got toys, you got your miscellaneous. You know, he actually did the hand thing with miscellaneous. Like, I needed hand gestures to understand what miscellaneous means. But he he dropped, he gave me those gems the last time I went. So this time I had everything sectioned out. And so you know, the brother came out with the bin. Was it said, him? Okay. No, it wasn't him. It was somebody else. That young kid. <clears throat> uh, he was middle aged. About my age, I, I would assume, okay. but he had a mask on. So it, it wasn't a kid, though. Um, and he said, what we got? And I said, oh, I got housewares. <laughs> I got toys. <laughs> like, he's like, oh, so you, you, read, you read the website. I was like, nah. I said, somebody gave me, gave me knowledge um, last time I was here. And so I was like, hey, man, you. Because I thought we had made a connection. Right. Yeah. So I was like, hey, man. It's like, you take hangers? He was like, no. I was like, okay, cool. So I snatched, I snatched the receipt and then. Left, you got I, a receipt this time? Yeah, I got a receipt. Thank you. Um, so I went to uh, Harris Teeter, got my, uh, went to Starbucks, got my um, white chocolate mocha latte. It's Black it. History Month. You should have gotten a <laughs> black chocolate mocha. It's, uh, it's Black History Month every month, ma'am. And um, 
You know, listening to Addicted Love by CC and BB and CC Winans coming home. A little throwback, a little ode to the to the Winans. And um, <clears throat> I put on my hard hat when I got home. I installed a baby gate, and then um, I patched patched the wall, a hole in the wall in our in our daughter's and how bedroom. Did, um, that hole in the wall. It's not important. And so I, you know, I was feeling like I could conquer anything, and so I put a post up on Facebook. <laughs> And then my my wife my my bet my yeah. alleged better half uh, quickly I'm just here at the park quickly rained in my parade and brought me back down to reality. No, this dude posted a picture. <laughs> yeah, with, I had. With a I just started having visions. You know, once you realize you can do stuff, you just started having visions of grand, like just grand things that Don't you can accomplish. I'm like, gonna be some super, like, I think I can some construction. I think super. I can install those French doors on my office. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yo, be easy, Tim the Two Man Taylor, like. Come on. Not 10 minutes after I posted the status, this little, little party I just so happened came. to have my phone in yeah. my hand and Facebook yeah. like sent the update that because Facebook feels you, the need her, to she tell is me. Like, she's like a heat seeker for whenever I am experiencing a triumph and she just comes like, you remember the heat seeker shell on Mario Kart for all you, all you millennials? It just She just finds my joy and then she just tries to, to take it out. Um, happy uh, Black History Month, by the way, even though it's it's every month. It is every month. So um, anyway, since you're funny, funny enough, though, like on, on social media, everybody is saying. I said yesterday on the first day of Black History Month, the reminder that every month is Black History mm-hmm. Month. It's not just it February, but everybody, gave, everybody, you know, just coincidentally reminded everyone yesterday. Because lest you first forget. Day of February. Um, so. Oh, what are you drinking? I'm sorry. I made a Bahama Mama. Which is why it's in this tiki glass. So some regular, some white rum, some coconut rum, some pineapple juice, some orange juice, and some lemon sparkling water. I'm drinking a uh, red label Johnny Walker, which is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I've 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 had this in black, and I actually prefer this over black. Even though I hear that this is like it's still, it's this a, is like the entry level mm-hmm. Johnny Walker uh, a label, but it's. It's my preference treating, too. Treating me well. I got and I got a couple ice cubes in here I or uh, to, rocks. Excuse me, not ice cubes. I used to do um, penicillins. That used to be my my drink with uh, with Red Label. So maybe okay. I'll I'll make those one day so you can enjoy. Well, was, I just drank the last of it. So okay, then I'll make it with black. Okay. Anywho, I'll take it. <laughs> anywho, you doing all right? Yeah, it's been. Um, <clears throat> It's been it's been interesting. Have so? It's just been interesting uh first, you know, full month of the of the post 2020 <laughs> <laughs> post 2020 nightmare and um you know, things are you know, progressing a little bit. I I feel like you know, we got vaccine people getting vac- vaccinated. Shots um we just uh we're here in north carolina obviously so uh today our our governor announced that he is strongly encouraging i believe was the language used uh schools to reopen and get kids back into into the classrooms because science shows that uh you know they can be done so safely Allegedly. We have a five-year-old who is in kindergarten, and she's got to go. <laughs> she, she she does, but I, I think it would it would be good. I was um, I was talking to someone about just how worried I am about her not being able to experience childhood as as we experienced it, and and even my my old my older brothers, his generation, and my parents' generation. You know, just being able to run around the neighborhood or, or go to friends' houses and just do sleepovers. Or even and, just recess. Yeah. So we, I mean, we have, we have a bubble of people who we, you know, we, we visit with. Um, it's pretty much friends and Jessica has a couple of close friends who we consider family anyway, who, who pop in and out. But for the most part, it's just, yes, you do. Canel. But Canel's, Samantha. Canel's family. I said who are basically family. Samantha had been, been around in a minute. Sam was here like four months ago. Anyways, That's- <laughs> uh, so, you know, we, she, she has two cousins who she probably sees the most. Um, and they're in her age group. So yeah. it's not like so it's, a- so she's, she's not totally missing out, but it's, it's obviously different. So things are, you can kind of see things kind of trending toward 
um, a return to normal. I think we hit a milestone as a country yesterday. There were more vaccinations done completed than cases, or we reached more oh. more vaccinations than than cases of, of coronavirus here. So, uh, look at us. Yeah, we're things are looking looking good. But we've got this, you know, this UK variant, which I'm certain is payback for the American Revolution. Yeah, the views of Jessica belong to her and her himself. They are not I, indicative I, 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 of I the was views of the collective <laughs> Russia vibes. I was uh, listening um, to my boy, David Muir. All uh, David. hate mail <laughs> should be sent to her. <laughs> Jessica rushing on Elizabeth to, Rush, Messiah rushing on Facebook. I was listening to my boy, David Muir. And I like saying his name, Muir, because it's, 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 it's a four letter name. Oh, oh stiff David. He's Muir. But he's just so he's he got an amazing posture. He and he delivers the news in such a an amazing way. He's he he's he's just gonna be the next George Stephanopoulos. Like he's gonna take over when George next. Like, I mean, you know, David's been around a minute. David has been, but Dave he's like not, he's not a but, spring chicken. But George, like George, is on first thing in the morning. Things happen in the middle of the day. George is ABC's Wolf, Wolf Blitzer. Blitzer and John King mesh together like that's that's the capacity that george stephanopoulos has so david muir was talking about the uk variant um when uh, a couple of days ago on one of the the world news broadcasts and i was thinking i was like it just popped in my head i said what if this is the united kingdom's payback like what if this is the queen coming back like haha you guys thought you got your independence and i was just gonna let it slide nah suckers Here's our variant that is taking over because that's what they did. I'm just saying, I'm just, just, just my thoughts, just nothing serious. Just, just a thought that rolled, rolled into my mind. She can also be reached via DM at Jess Russian on Instagram. If you have any feelings about these wild, uh, baseless Someone's conspiracy got theories conspiracy speaking going. of conspiracy theories Uh-oh. and you know how last week we ended on cancel culture which was supposed to be our main topic but ended up getting bumped to like i guess like maybe the last five minutes because we couldn't stop segueing <laughs> we had That's probably just... the most extended the, the longest segue in podcast history mm-hmm. uh the entire show was just one long segue um you know the that we, we try not to we've intentionally tried to stay away from politics since our um wtf america uh episode which was episode six maybe i think uh but the 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 representative from uh georgia have you seen that like is she the crazy lady she's the she, troubled lady i won't say crazy I'll say she yeah she's um alleged to she's from a, georgia yeah I, I believe like 75 percent of people in her district like voted for her too the one who believes in like QAnon, QAnon, and, yeah, yeah, and who said we should shoot? He said that Nancy Pelosi needs to be shot in the head, hanged, or something like that. Yeah, so uh, okay, Georgia, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I appreciate the flip that you guys did. So yeah, she's actually been in the headlines and and um, has been a lot of the Democrats have kind of called like oh she should be removed but mm-hmm. they also want to I think she's like on the education yeah she's like yeah. a board head which so, makes no sense so uh they've they've talked about trying to just like ignore like push her to a corner <laughs> and just kind of at least republicans just kind of push her to the corner and just be like yeah we're just not going to acknowledge her and then there's, some democrats have been like oh she needs to be you know removed but that requires a two-thirds vote so that's probably not going to happen uh but it's interesting because it's like you know, cancel culture. It's it's almost like the first thing that that happens when someone says something that's wildly different from or or <clears throat> a polar opposite from maybe the the widely accepted opinion or or viewpoint or something. Mm-hmm. It almost seems like the immediate call is like, oh, they need to go away. <laughs> they need to be. They need to be. They need to have their. Their. They need to be fired from whatever their job is. If, their it, if it's a. If it's a politician, they need to be removed. But I think impeached. that really. I think cancel culture only really applies to Democrats. Hmm. I don't feel. What, that, what do you mean? I don't feel that the repercussions of saying something or doing something detrimental really hurts republicans as it does 
Democrats. And, uh, and if you think about it, like think of Al Franken, think of um, like there are a lot of miscellaneous. Wiener. Wiener. My guy. Which Not then really. trickled down. <laughs> it trickled down to don't his say, wife. Don't say trickle with. with <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Oh, um, and then it it, mm. it it came on to Hillary. Like it's it bad, bothered Hillary. A uh, but it's a bad pun. I just feel that. Oh, that is right. Yeah. His laptop. And then that's what caused Comey. The, oh, I forgot all about that. So, so it's like Republic. It's, Damn that wiener. I know. <laughs> Gonna take a moment to press <laughs> to not. Okay, I just feel like when Republicans do so, like it's almost as if we expect them to do or say something offensive, so no one truly holds them accountable. And that start like even you can tell just by the last administration and how things were executed there. But when Democrats, when a Democrat does something, even if it's something from their past that resurfaces. Um, is it, was it the governor of Virginia or a Senator from Virginia? I guess he, you know, in his frat boys had done like, yeah, yeah, he had done, um, blackface. Good old blackface. (laughs) Yo, so many, like, I, I, I'm more surprised when someone doesn't have a blackface photo from their past that hasn't come out yet. Like they just come out so frequently and I'm just like, Oh, there goes another one. (laughs) Who, Who else did it? I mean, I, and there's, there's, uh, oh, they're always taking pictures. Like we didn't even have camera phones back then, and y'all still had pictures. Like you had Polaroids that you had to shake. People were that responsible to keep track yeah. of so them. So I, so I, I guess in that respect, you're absolutely right that um, it would seem, based on headlines and whatnot, that uh, Republicans are a little more uh, resistant to cancel their own, mm-hmm. whereas Democrats kind of, uh, they're almost, they almost shoot from the hip. Yeah. And, are, and are pretty quick triggered uh, when it comes to that. And you're right, you mentioned Al Franken um, and Wiener. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, people uh, ha- kind of have to go away and they don't even really get an get opportunity for um, for like redemption, for redem- redemption yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's cool. Um, I can I can definitely see that. Yeah, it's just, it's just something that... But it's kind of just run rampant. Like, anytime especially on social media, like this is one of the things that's pretty consistent on Twitter is when something controversial is said or or somebody has controversial views, you just see just, it's like hordes of people on Twitter just like, oh, they gotta go fire. Don't, um, don't renew their contract if it's somebody who has like a show or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, advertisers pull out and it's just kind of, um, you know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm somebody who, so like, uh, Alex Jones, and this is going to seem kind of contradictory what I'm about to say, but like he's almost been wiped off like all platforms. Mm-hmm. Alex Jones, the was the the guy who was who really pushed the Sandy Hook conspiracy. Um, he's kind of been just rem- almost scrubbed completely from from uh, a lot of the uh, the the big social media platforms. Um, and I'm not upset about it. Like I'm not, I don't miss him. But at the same time, it's like. You just gonna remove everyone. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know who he is. Uh, it, so I, I guess it comes down to like, is something like if something someone is saying is dangerous, and that if enough people believe what they're hearing, they act on it, and then by by uh, by by the extent of that, they they end up harming other people. Then okay, yeah, then they, they probably need to go. But um, if it's just like stuff a lot of people don't agree with, and I use Alex Jones as an example, I know a lot of his stuff is, is pretty nuclear. Um, so uh, this probably doesn't necessarily apply to him. May not have been the best example, but it's like, are we truly thinking that these that people are harmful with their words and their thoughts, or is it just stuff that we don't agree with and we'd rather not deal with mm. differing opinions and we just we just rather those people go away? So I think that's the thing that's kind of tricky with with cancel culture and um, you know trying to just get rid of people who have opposing viewpoints as opposed to allowing everybody to operate in their own space and, and there to be dialogue and then maybe some understanding, but if not, you know, people should still have the opportunity to express their, their belief. So it's, it's, it's a slippery slope for sure. Even, even Jack Dorsey came out and said, you know, he didn't feel good about removing Trump from Twitter. Um, but it kind of laid out the reasons why. And then, you know, maybe some, some steps to outline for social media platforms to, to avoid, um, having to do those things or having the ability to do, do those things. So it's um, interesting times for sure. To say the least. But uh, 
to be clear, I'm not the biggest fan of cancel culture, um, mainly because I, I have the ability to, to see or read something that someone says. And if I don't agree with it, like on Facebook, I'll just keep scrolling. I won't. <laughs> that is I, your, I won't, your, I won't, it's your American right to I won't write ignore. The, I won't write like a whole dissertation under the post about why they're wrong or whatever. I'll just be like, hmm, I don't agree. And if I feel like throwing something in there, I will. But if not, I'm like, okay, I'll just keep scrolling. So I think, I think as a country, for sure, I don't know, I can't speak for the world, but I think we've lost our ability to just be okay with the fact that people are going to have different opinions than, than we have on, on certain things sometimes. And that's okay. Like it's, it's fine. It is what it is. Not everybody has to, to agree on everything. So I'm not sure how we got there, but I I did want to finish up on that because I felt like we kind of rushed through it at the end um, of last episode, but uh, we do need to take a break. We do. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we will be back. All right, we and, are back, and we're back. I used to love saying that because there was a skit on Saturday Night Live. I don't. It wasn't Seth Meyer. It's the guy from what's the movie with Will Ferrell where they do the head bopping? Oh, what's that movie? It's gonna kill. It's gonna bother me. I know someone saw that or knows what I'm talking about. If anybody knows what Jessica is talking Please about, comment. put it's, it in the it's comments. It's like maybe 1999, early thousands. Um, it was w- like Will Ferrell and this littler white guy with dark hair um kind of goofy looking but he used to did be did you say littler <laughs> <laughs> i did say littler I'm, I'm, um, I'm stuck on that it what was that song i could hear it in my head i can't i can't um i can't say it but um they there was this skit and this Eddie. is why this is why cousin Mark says we need a producer, somebody who could just, <laughs> just like, hey, go, go Google it. What's, have, what's the, this is what the Saul, Will This is what Salas should be doing. Just keep her up to Google. Um, but he, to used to, he used to have this skit in Saturday Night Live and they'd be like, and we're back. And I don't know. I just every time we say that, I think of that. It's absolutely irrelevant and doesn't make any sense. I just had a moment of nostalgia and for, felt like bringing it up. But we touched on this just a moment ago. And I just wanted to circle back. So we are in February, um, the 2021 year of our Lord, 2021 year of our Lord, our COVID, our Biden and Harris and Madam Vice President Harris, Madam Vice President, VP, HBCU alumni. It's almost like... Quick segue. It's almost as if no one really cares about Biden. Like, it's great. Like, hey, thanks, Uncle Biden. I care about Um, Joseph. But (laughs) we are all here for Kamala. A lot of us. I think we're all here for $2,000 checks. (laughs) (laughs) Or I'm sorry, $1,400 checks. Joe, but I have my money. I'm about to get all all Rihanna on him. Oh, Um, we got a stimulus check. I forgot to tell (laughs) y'all. We got it in between the uh, last episode and this episode. The STEMI Y'all, arrived. When I tell you, he set up this informed uh, delivery or something. Where they, I think they it is. send you like an email or text of it, what all your when your mail comes to which your is, which is a which is a good thing. Yeah, to they know. scan it in unless it's like a magazine or just like a generic flyer, so you can see before the mailman gets to your house an image of what your mail is. I was looking at that thing every single, I was looking at it on Sundays. It was. And I knew mail doesn't come on Sundays. It was insane. And it's so sad because the kids, and I even think Sovereign has picked up on it, have have recognized David's <laughs> obsession with the mail. That was it yesterday or today? It was today. Silas told me We that. were in my, the girls and I were in my office and that's in the front of the house. So you can see the window. And I heard a truck and I said, oh, is that the mailman? So Silas looks out the window and she comes to, she comes over and she says, Daddy, the mail the mail is here. Because she has recognized Well so so part of this is is habit. So when um at the beginning of twenty twenty, I was on paternity leave for twelve weeks because our youngest sovereign was born. Mm-hmm. Um so and his last employer respected the importance of they did, paternity they, leave. They, they, although they, they didn't always, so let's not give them too much credit. But, because, we, but you know what? Um, Cancel culture. When I was hired. Redemption culture. I was hired in 2014, and right after I was hired, they changed the policy to give uh, dads two weeks uh, paid, paid time off. And then by the time uh, Jessica was, was pregnant again, um, they had bumped it up to, to 12. 
So I was, I was, I was for the first three months, you know, I was on paternity leave. So in the morning I was getting her oldest ready for daycare because she was still going there at the time. And then you know, I was out and, and running around kind of doing all the outside administrative things that uh, Jessica would normally do when I wasn't home. And then, of course, the pandemic hit. So uh, initially I was the only one going to the grocery store. But once I started, started back working, I actually changed jobs during it toward the I came back after paternity leave for a few weeks. Maybe I don't know how long it was. Months. It was a couple months uh, and then changed jobs. Oh, no, it was a few weeks. Yeah, it was. I don't think it was, it was too long. Um, so when I, I was in front of the computer, like literally all day, uh, that was that was just my job. So my one uh, excitement for the day was being able to walk to the mailbox. That was like me getting my you like time my, it. My, my fresh air. I was just going to the, it was it was a long, like it's maybe 20 feet from our front door. But I would I would milk those 20 feet I would take my time it was summertime spring summertime so the weather was beautiful um you know I would watch the birds you know let them eat from my hand and then you know I'd, I'd come back in and then that would be it so I, I I have established pattern of going to the mailbox that's been my thing but yes it's been amplified ever since I I knew we were getting a uh stimulus check because you know it's it's found money you know that's the money you're not expecting but you know you, you take it <laughs> Yes. So I was excited. So the, to poor, get the poor child day. recognized her dad's obsessive yeah. need to go but to the mailbox. The STEMI, the STEMI arrived, Finally ladies arrived, and gentlemen. What, so like if there's anybody three days late. And there's anybody out there who uh, so because a lot of people I looked online had this problem. Um, if 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 uh, you check the get my payment tool and it said January six, it was scheduled to be mailed out. Um, you're probably if you haven't received it already, it's probably coming. Um, because Honestly, everyone you received it already. You <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyone who received, who had that on their get, get my payment, you know, search return, anyone who had said January 6th, like they had just started getting it within the last week, week and a half. So what was the um, date on the check? Did they cut it on the 6th? I believe so. Yeah. Dang. Okay. It just took. Snail you know mail, what? Maybe we should look into this, this mailer fraud, <laughs> this voter fraud through yeah, the mail. So, but some people are also getting, some what? people are also getting them on uh, debit cards and they're not, they're expecting like it's different from what they got last time. So like last time they got a check this time they're getting a debit card or last time they got direct deposit this time for some reason they're getting mailed a check. So, um, we might need to look into this voter fraud. I have, I'm concern. sorry, but, but continue. I, I just concerns. want to let everybody know our, our stimmy came. So if anybody was out there praying for us, pulling for us, we appreciate you. Keep the faith. You probably, you probably don't. weren't, but I'm going to believe and that receive that somebody was, uh, uh, keep the faith. If you're still waiting on yours, yeah, it's um, coming. You'll get it. You might get it you might just have to write it off on your taxes um Follow the 1040. speaking of where's your w-2 uh it should be coming yesterday was they was the last day for employers to mail them out so i got the one from my first from my main job okay from my current job i got and i'm waiting on the one from my last employer because identity fevers they're telling you to file file quick <clears throat> so we trying to do that and we got that extra baby you know <laughs> i said extra like <laughs> Like we just have them in the closet. Let's grab an extra baby. But yeah. it is Black History Month. Yes, it is. We happen to be black, uh, blackity black. Uh, I'm motherland black. Uh, he's Virginia, North Carolina black. So we we blackity black. Northern Virginia. Northern. Vir- Not to be confused with the rest of Virginia. Excuse me. Um, Nova, Nova, stand up. Whoop, whoop. How do you do it? Isn't it? It's two up, two down, baby. Which way? Whichever way it would be a V and then like like you write it in V A. Yeah. So that's that so would that be it. Way. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not repping. It's not that, it's not I, that I'm not here to rep. Um That's right, because you're not from I'm not you're from, from Virginia. There. I've been no. through Virginia. A lot of people have been through it, but oh, it takes a long time to get through Virginia. But um yeah, it's Black History Month and we are you drive slow, it does. We we happen to be black. So we can speak on on this 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 topic, this experience. But in Black History Month, in the year 2021, following year a very, Lord. what? Year of our Lord. Following a very turbulent year of realization of black existence in this country, um, I wanted to talk about, you're going to get annoyed, and I feel like you already know you're going to oh, get annoyed. I, I wanted to talk about... Cultural appropriation. <laughs> because I, I've i been curious, I, I've thought about this, you know, and I'm going to say her name wrong, but a few, 
maybe the beginning of the year. I think we were still pre-pandemic. It might have just been maternity leave. Um, the I stumbled upon the Rachel Dolaze? Dolazal. Dolazal. My bad. Um, I'm actually, I too. <laughs> <laughs> I stumbled upon her documentary on Netflix and I don't know why I felt compelled to watch it. So I put it on. David was sitting next to me on the couch or across from me on our sectional in our, our loft upstairs. And he let me watch it. I don't know why he didn't say anything to the fact that I was watching it. But I, I, I find her interesting. And I remember when she first hit the street and like people really like, Hey, this lady's white. Um, my dad, my parents were like, why should we be mad at her? Because people are always try to be white and we finally have a white person who wants to be black. Like, let us let us receive her with open arms. Like, come on. Um, Just the views of Jessica's father are not, <laughs> do not reflect <laughs> the views as a whole of us here on Mind Rush Vibes. You, this was how many years ago? Five, six years ago when she, her name first started to circulate. It may have been longer than that. So, know. you know, our education in terms of, of blackness and the misuse and the appropriation of blackness has obviously changed. But, you know, I, I guess I'm always, I started to get curious on what the line between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation is. Because there are many little, little things that people do that, you know, you'll see a white girl get braids and post a picture of it. And then people, you know, will come for her and just be like, oh, you know, you're culturally appropriating. You ain't black, blah, blah, blah. And maybe she went to the Bahamas. If you've been to the Bahamas, th as soon as you get off of the ship, that port, like they've got women just sitting there to braid your hair. Um, I remember in, you know, middle school and high school during lunch, you know, we'd braid people's hair. Like I've braided some people's hair. So it's it's not something that I I see as a big deal in terms of, of hair. Like, if someone could argue that my hair is, is naturally kinky and curly. So, I, you know, I'm sitting here with a blowout like that. I don't know if, if white people have appropriation. But someone, if they wanted to start that argument and they would lose, um, could claim that, you know, I am appropriating because I've blown my hair out straight and it's not in its natural state. So... I guess I, I just wonder what how fine that line is. And also, obviously, Rachel has, has clearly exceeded. She's gone so far beyond that line. But I was listening to a couple of, um, I think it was Wendy Williams talked about it, and I, someone else talked about it. And Alec Baldwin's wife <laughs> happens to be, she's, she's white. She's from Massachusetts. Boston, not Worcester, my stomping grounds. Boston. Boston. Um, Need to find my khakis. Don't do that. That's not polite. What? Don't make a mockery of our khakis. Don't make, don't Stop do market. Okay. Are you done? You finished? You Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't all speak like that. As Jessica you. speaks like that if you get her drunk enough. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so she be all bougie when she on the mic. You get a couple, you get a couple glasses of champagne in her. She be like, "Where are my keys?" Anyway, I, hot I'm just, dog. <laughs> what? Who says my hot, hot dog? dog. <laughs> Give me that um, thing, my hot dog over what's there. What's that thing I say that solace always for me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, mommy, who'd you get this ice cream for? For, for me. me. Uh, so now she says it too. So um, I'm hoping that I can infiltrate her little Southern accent. But anyway, so Hilar her name is Hilaria Baldwin. I've heard that her name is actually just Hillary. Um, but she, she, <laughs> she's, she's told people that she's Spanish, that she's from Spain. And she's white. So, I mean, it, it, it's it's possible. Like she, it, uh, Spanish people from Spain are white. Can we, can, we, can we do it? Do what? Can we just take a quick... A quick aside, you guys know I love I love my oh, my no. sides. So Jessica, my just ever so enlightening wife, um, rocked my world a couple of months ago when she told me that Charlie Sheen <laughs> and Martin Sheen, the Sheens, the Sheens are related to Emilio Estevez. And that their last name was it's originally Estevez. Estevez, and they changed it. 
I had no I knew Emilio looked like Charlie. And I knew Charlie was Martin's son. But I was like, maybe they're just like Let me break it. Let me break it down for y'all. So this is how it is. I, I was so mind blown. Martin that- Sheen, his name is like is is like OG Spanish, like Carlos Juan San Lucas Carlos. Estevez. So they got in they got here, they got into Hollywood and they were like, yo. They culturally appropriated whiteness. That's what they did. They culturally appropriated Americanness. Martin and Charlie. Yo, yeah. <laughs> we, we need to come for them. So they they essentially they uh, were able to take advantage of being having the ability to pass as white Americans. And they and Martin Sheen recognized that if he wanted to be successful, he needed an easy name. And Martin Sheen is an easy name. So he changed his name. Charlie changed his name. Emilio. Kept his name. Shout out to Emilio for sticking, sticking Don't to his Don't shout roots. out Emilio. Well, I mean, yeah, you know what? You kept your roots. And he gave us the Mighty Ducks. He did. And that's the last thing. The first and no, last. No, he, uh, he did that Western movie. What was it called? So that was the last thing. <laughs> If you have to it's reference a, good, no. a Western movie, it was good. I just don't remember the name. So it. It, it just shows you the dynamic because this is literally in I one. I think they're rebooting the Mighty Ducks too. Are they? Is I he going to so. be in it? Is I it going to so. be like Cobra Kai where it's just a duck? Yo, you will not. A duck soap opera. You will not speak ill of Cobra. Cobra Kai is the, sh- the you know what. Look, it is a karate soap opera. That no. is what Co- Cobra Kai See, is. And you, it's you absolutely ridiculous. No, you know like Kevin Hart said in, in uh, what was the, the ensemble movie? Um, treat what is it think like a man think like a man too it's like you ain't got the knowledge you haven't seen karate kid one two or three i've seen karate seen, kid one i you haven't, haven't seen, seen all two of or it. three or four i don't know how many are you there haven't seen all of we don't count the ones past three don't really count is that the one with will smith said? hillary swank did one and then um jaden and then yeah they rebooted with jackie chan that's why will smith is um well they they the bought producer. the they bought the rights to the franchise but i mean that's why he's a producer of cobra kai well, he owns it, so he just puts yeah, he puts his name on it. Yeah. Anyway, Cobra Kai is a karate soap opera. Come for me if you want. I found I have she a dis- show. That I have me. evidence that a show writer even con- confirmed he. They said it is a karate soap opera. But anyway, back it is to- kind of funny. Like, <laughs> like you see kids, uh, you know, they they have beef in the cafeteria, and when normally people just start throwing hands. They like, <laughs> like what am I doing? It's um, not that serious. Throw, it's, but it's, it, it is. I need you to just you, throw if, if, that carton of milk. If you have not seen Cobra Kai. Don't do it. Watch. It is fat. And it's only 30 minutes. So you can get through a season in one afternoon. It is fantastic. It is a karate soap opera. It's amazing. And if you were a fan of the Karate Kid in the 80s, uh, and I think the last one may have been early 90s, um, it's, it's All great. before my time. It's 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 great. It's good stuff. Don't don't listen to this hater over here. Right. If Continue. you if you yeah, I mean General Hospital is still on ABC. So if you want a soap opera, just just watch that. Uh, don't ever <laughs> don't don't compare. It is a karate soap opera. So back to appropriation. So Emilio Estevez kept his name. He respected his roots, his honor. And Martin and Charlie were like, "Yo, we trying to get this money, winning." Yeah, I remember when Charlie said winning. Then he got like every STD in the book and he wasn't winning anymore. Um, And Emilio Estevez's career just didn't take off the way his father and brothers did. And and there have been interviews and I've I've seen articles, didn't read all of them, um, but seen them that, you know. It's a good thing you do your research. I mean, this wasn't the topic of conversation. You segued because I educated you on the fact that. No, you. Mind he was blow. so blown away. Like he, he said, he said, I thought they looked alike. Yeah. So I mean, it just shows even if you are white passing because you are essentially white, but your name specifies something else, it it can still prevent your progress. So you know, Charlie and Martin, they are. I mean, Charlie's probably not able to do much now, but Martin Sheen is is a respectable member of the performing arts world and he's the president on west wing yes he is the president on i still west have wing. yet to go back and watch that series i keep telling myself i'm gonna do it didn't you start it i started you it started i started when i was getting up early in the mornings but then it's hard to certain shows are hard to yeah to keep up with and if you cycle into something yeah, else. i don't think i've ever made it past like 
episode three. <laughs> oh, then I can jump on too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just it just it's sad that you know, and I don't really remember the Mighty Ducks. I was a kid the last time I watched it, so I can't speak on Emilio's quality of performance. Uh, Pacey was Pacey was in there. Yeah, Josh, uh, Joshua Jackson. He has he like sneaks into things, no, uh, but his wife is black. Come through, come through. Uh, she was in Queen and Slim. She was queen. If in case you were wondering. Um, Thanks for that breaking news. Anyway, Jessica. it it just it it shows an interesting dynamic that you know they are they're white because if you're from Spain. You are white. If you are Spanish, you are, you know, conquistador. You're white, but you speak Spanish. Um, but even that, like, the power of your name could, I'm not saying it did, but it, it seemingly it's, it's, it's has very, played a significant it's, role. It's very telling that they, they have had substantial careers and Emilio hasn't. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm sure Emilio, between Emilio and Charlie, Emilio is probably the more level headed, um, Again, Charlie went around saying winning for... You never know. Emilio could just be better at concealing his... He could be. But then again, when was the last time you saw Emilio? Where you at, though? He's around. If he's going to be part of the reboot. Is he? Did you confirm? I believe so. I saw a picture of him on the article that I was... We need our producer. Skimming. We should start FaceTiming Mark while no, we're doing the I'm show. Do and, then he can, and then he can do it. But back to the initial topic, which uh, was cultural, the, the fine line between appropriation, appreciation. appropriation and appreciation. So I personally appreciate Latin American culture. Like you can take me to, I'm actually boycotting the Dominican Republic, but you can take me to essentially any Latin American country. And I, I'm both, I'm, I'm okay. He's making a face. So I got to specify. So I have, I've been to the Dominican Republic. I loved when I was in the Dominican Republic. I went to Punta Cana. I stayed in amazing, the Rio resort. I went with Shannon and we, Shout out to cousin Shannon. yes. Um, I had, up, I had my signature drink, the Turquesa dream. I still remember it like four years later. Uh, we has had, it been that long? It has been. Wow. Went, Time flies. Yeah. So, Time um, flies. yeah, I went in 2017. Mm. Uh, and it was it was an amazing experience. There was this random white guy who was wearing this one piece thong bathing suit. Um, I remember that. And I I asked. I was so bothered. And I was like live. This was before Twitter was. I mean, Instagram was really like stories and like none of that was there. So I was on Facebook just like posting pictures and updating people. Like update. This is what he he told me why he's wearing this. Whatever. Um, I loved the Dominican Republic. I but because of the his you were somebody's wife fascinated with a white man's thong. That's he had a wife. I just need to know why he was wearing it. No, swingers are a thing, you know. I wasn't trying to swing. I'm not swinging with no man who I don't know you, the way you were, you were paparazzi in him. I, I was just so concerned. Well, he was wearing shots. shorts. He was wearing shorts, but you could see, like, you could tell. And it was a one-piece jumper. Anyway, um, my issue with, with why I am boycotting Disrespect. the Dominican Republic is just the overall racism um, that takes place. You know, there have been extreme slaughters that have taken place. Uh, there's just a river that separates Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And I'm not saying all Dominican. I'm not speaking over all Dominicans. Um, the views expressed by <laughs> I'm simply saying, as a nation, I don't appreciate their the lack of effort they put to protecting Haitians and sure. the lack of effort that or acknowledgement that goes into the fact that I'm gonna say it, y'all can be offended, come for me. I'm, I'm not really concerned. Um, the real Her. difference, the significant difference between Haitians and Dominicans is one of y'all parlez-vous français, the other. Habla Espanol. Like, it's, it's, it's a river. Y'all are the same island separated by a river. So I just the discrimination, the racism, the abuse, and just the overall lack of appreciation for Haiti as a nation. Like, overall, the, the, the black, especially the Western Hemisphere, black world, owes a lot of appreciation to Haiti. Haiti was the first black nation to gain independence from slavery and then they were like we are gonna go over this river through the woods and free our our brothers our hermanos over there and then y'all like just the audacity um that's why i am temporarily 
until y'all get your act together. I'm boycotting the Dominican Republic. I'm also Notice she held these views after she took her trip <laughs> four, four years ago. She had to get that trip in, and then after she Look, got back again, after she cleared education, customs, my education has changed. I I can acknowledge. Don't cancel me. This is why you can't cancel people because people grow, they just, evolve, they get they they get learned. They get educated. So All right, on, you got one more. You got on one top more of word. that, I'm also temporarily boycotting France because of the sanctions for which they put on Haiti after Haiti got its independence, which is why Haiti is still in debt to France to this day. Yo, so we, I am boycotting. It's Black History Month. Is this, so a, pod do, disguised as a, hit, this is a hit piece disguised as a podcast? Like I, I don't know how we got here. Aaron Grievances with we're, everybody. We're here, so I can't leave. Look, so as long I, as I'm not on the list, I don't care. You talk about whoever I, you I want mean, to. I mean, the list is long. Just, just wait if your I'm turn. Not, as long as I'm at the bottom. Wait, wait your there. turn. So I am temporarily boy, temporarily boycotting the Dominican Republic and also France. Now, if someone offers me a free trip to France, to the Champagne region, um, uh, to I, I probably will go, the Cannes Film Festival. Um, but I, I, while I'm there, I will vocalize my dissatisfaction. Not if you're trying to come back, you won't. With the <laughs> French. Even though I rock with Macron. I just like saying his name. I just, he's like, he's just a cool, he's a cool president. But he still owes Justice needs to be given to Haiti. And my Haitian brothers and sisters, I respect you. I appreciate you. I think that is a fabulous, fabulous uh, place for us to stop and take our last break. Stop. So let's go ahead. Collaborate and listen. Let's go ahead and do that. And then I I think we'll come back and and wrap up on uh, uh, appropriation versus appreciation. Stay tuned. And we're back to... The international bashing episode <laughs> of Rush Vibes. Uh, so yeah, but in in a long winded way, back to what I was getting to. I have a great appreciation for Latin American countries, um, specifically because there. Even though I recognize that there is a lot of racism, and that's that's the next step that we need to cover uh, in terms of you know we're covering black. The black diaspora, we also need to cover the black diaspora within, you know, Latin American countries. But what I love, I've been to Panama, I've been to Mexico, I've been to the Dominican Republic. I will not be returning until you guys fix your ways. But what I love about visiting Latin American countries is even though if I go to France, if I go to London, maybe not London, but Germany, whatever, it's like, y'all know I'm black. Like, I don't belong here. <laughs> like, where, where you come from? Go back. Um, but in a Latin American country, because unfortunately through the slave trade and the enslavement of Africans, we are, we're, we're there. So, you know, when we, when, again, I went, I went to, to Panama with Shannon. Yo, we got to go more places. We already talked about doing more traveling once the world is safe and opens up again. But you go to these countries and people look at you and they're like, I'm just going to speak to you in Spanish because you look like you could be here. When I was in Panama, I went to a cigar shop that was run by a second generation Vietnamese Panamanian man who went to school in the University of Austin. He was a Pan- He was from Panama. Parents immigrated to Panama. He was born and raised in Panama, spoke Spanish, but was Asian with no persuasion because he didn't talk me into buying the expensive cigars, which I'm glad I didn't because David made, let them go bad. Um, but these these countries are legit. Before, before I became a uh, connoisseur. Yeah, um, these I appreciate a good cigar. <laughs> these countries are legitimate melting pots. So it's not someone David's color could be from there parents from there someone my color people darker than me and i think that's so beautiful and i'm i i'm not setting aside the the racist the racism that's instilled in these countries um that i as a tourist may not become victim to because i'm just visiting and i'm on that tourist high but i do appreciate that so you know I used to wonder, like, you know, I love, I love me some good tacos. I love me some good empanadas. I love, like, I love arroz con Like, I love, I okay, love. Okay, we get it. You, oh, can, you get it. We, we get it. Okay. okay. That's enough. Um, Goodness. I have a great, my great grandfather, I've been told is from the West Indies, and I'm certain he's got to be from uh, 
a Latin American country because my love for like I, there are times where I'm like, how do I end up with with him? Because I like give me some merengue, give Wait, me some bachata. Like I I have an appreciation Look. so much. Um, so Look. it's like, where is that line between appreciation right and here. appropriation? Like I can I can throw down and I like I've been making some brilla tacos and David doesn't eat tacos and he's been eating them. So you just you just wonder. I, it, it makes me because our culture, our society is so sensitive. You wonder what am I doing that, even though I I'm appreciative, can be interpreted as appropriating. And I think a lot of white people fall into that. Um, some of them take it too far. Um, there's a family they start with car and end in Dashian um, that I think they they are definitely. You can't figure that out. <laughs> they, I, I personally feel like they are the definition of actually after Rachel. Like if you open up the dictionary of cultural appropriation, you see Rachel's picture uh, because she is she is CEO, and then you got the Kardashians, and it's it's frustrating because you know. You get to walk in your passing whiteness. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Kardashians are, I don't know what, uh, what's her name? Chris is. Uh, she, she, she's like Eastern European white, uh, I assume. Like American, but like her background is probably like German or Irish or one of the issues. Um, and then their father, uh, Robert Kardashian, he is... Armenian was what I mean okay was Armenian he's still Armenian he may not be with us but he's you notice uh speaking of Rob Kardashian do you notice that like almost every uh lawyer associated with OJ Simpson's defense team has like died like due to like a the, disease or something the OJ curse yeah I don't know it's like I think one of them a couple of them one or two of them still alive but like Kardashian died I think of cancer yeah he did. Johnny Cochran Died of cancer, I believe. Oh, um, I think a couple. I think one or two others have died. So it's just and then OJ breaking into the house, stealing his own memorabilia. And OJ still, still here. <sighs> Anywho, um, so they have the ability to to pass. Obviously, they can. They. I, I don't watch the Kardashians. Uh, David used to went through this. I tried phase. to. I tried to get into it, but <sighs> tried like he was always watching it, and I just didn't understand. It was maybe uh, it was three like, weeks. Nah, it was like a couple episodes. It wasn't like that. It was a couple episodes. He he was he was getting in there, and they are they're an interesting family because I remember one time Barbara Walters interviewed them and she said, you know, how does it feel to be famous for doing nothing? And that's essentially who they like. What do they what do they do? Kim had a sex tape and and her mom said, my daughter's not going to be known, even though that's all we remember her for, um, for her sex tape. She's I'm gonna take advantage of this and build an empire off of her and kudos to chris for doing that like you take you need to start teaching some momager masters master classes but they you know they've got the plastic surgery done they you know enhance the lips enhance the butt enhance the hips and like they they have done it and you know People get upset. Like, you know, there are pictures that Kim has posted, photo shoots that she's done, that she's, you know, copying black icons and like the champagne one with with the, the bottle and the glass on the butt. And, you know, people were really upset with her about that. And obviously she doesn't care and Kanye doesn't care. But, you know, how do you deter? I remember that one. I bet you do. Yeah. Well, forget it. How do you how do you determine I want to make sure I are the, like the, the star, Can you stop? The arc and That's the, enough. The aim? It's Photoshop. Oh. Okay. I think. Um, I thought she actually pulled it off with impress. How do you For multiple how, reasons. Yo. I'm sorry. We got a couple couches. <laughs> how bad. how does one determine if she's simply like wow? And I guess, you know, you, you know, let me, let me, let me, let me 
develop is, this. Is there a question here? There is. I just okay. have to, what is the ask? I'm going to develop the ask. So I'm sure there are many beautiful black women that Kim, Chloe, Courtney don't care. I can actually rock with Courtney because Courtney's like, I'm a skinny white girl and I'm just going to stay a skinny white girl. Um, what's the other one? Kylie? Kylie's the lipstick one. Um, and then the other one, I can't remember her name. Kendall. I can Kendall. So I can rock with Kendall, sort of, um, and Courtney because they're like, we're just gonna, we're just gonna be who we are. Except when Kendall did the Pepsi commercial during the like with the protest, like, oh, Pepsi's gonna save the world. Um, Honestly, I'm I'm shocked no one thought of it sooner. <sighs> Of course, this, Pepsi. Like, a, why? We're over here. We're, we're talking about policy and and and, and here's a Pepsi. Police training. Like Born just, in the Carolinas. Just share a Pepsi with somebody. Just a Pepsi. Just a regular old Pepsi. We not are not. Coke. We are not worthy. Not a RC. Her, a Pepsi. Of her presence because she has just that knowledge. She has led so many of us to the to the water. <sighs> that knowledge. So I'm sure that they've all looked at beautiful black women and thought wow like look at her shape look at her her full lips look at her her this her curvature her hips her butt and wanted that obviously because they they have manipulated their bodies to resemble that and i assume that there is a part of them that does appreciate it that you know you looked at yourself and you're like I don't have no hips. I don't have no butt. I don't have this, that, and I wish I had it. I, I, I wish I could enhance myself like that. They had the means to do that. And I wonder if they had just like enhanced their bodies and left it at that, if that would have been enough. But maybe, you know, you add the other things. You add that picture that Kim did, that photo shoot Kim did. You, you add things that Courtney does, not Courtney, Chloe does. And you have to wonder how, like, when did they stop appreciating and when do they start appropriating? And I guess appropriation comes with the fact that, you know, you can, you judge me for wearing my hair a certain way because I'm black and that's a, you know, protective style, a black style. But, you know, you as a white girl turn around and you braid your hair too. And you can still get a job, but I can't. Um, because if I go to an interview with a job, I mean, if I go to an interview with my hair like that, I'm not going to get the job because I'm coming off as too black. Whereas, you know, if you are white and you are appropriating, you, it's a switch that you can turn on. So I guess like Rachel could do that. She could be white if she chose to, but then she could also flip the switch and like, I'm going to be the super high yellowest black. I don't know how people didn't catch on. Um, Y'all, we're going to talk about this another day. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'm always curious because this kind of goes back to cancel culture. Like what it, it seems like such a fine line because there are, in my opinion, genuine white people who appreciate black culture. Uh, I've seen these people, you know, there there are people I've met people who have lived in Ghana, white people in Ghana who have experienced Ghana more than me. And I'm like, yo, this, this is my homeland. I'm going to need you to go back to Arkansas, uh, and, and get, get off my turf, but they, they speak the language, they eat the food, they, they, they are immersed in it because they love it so much. They love what it offers. They love the diversity. They love the difference in it. And it's like, they want to be a part of that. And it's unfortunate that they weren't born of that culture, but they want it. So it's like, I appreciate that you appreciate my culture, that you appreciate you know, our fabrics, our music, our dances, our, our home. Um, but what is the line where it's like, okay, now, now you, now you're doing too much. So it's the assist. Oh, um, pass you the ball. I need you to, there's a lot. I know. Cause unpack. you spoke for like all of the last segment. That's and, the first time you haven't interrupted me. And the, uh, the, the, so far the majority of this one um, <clears throat> so it may not surprise you uh, but I honestly don't have too big of a, an opinion on this because the reason why I think in essence is is the essence of your question like what is the line and to me I don't know that anyone's really been able to define it I think it's more subjective based on the person that's calling out the appropriation so, um, 
like the the picture with uh, Adele that came out um, oh, recently. Yeah. She oh. was she was I don't even remember. I know she was dressed. Uh, and she what, was what, celebrating, what, what, but she was dressed in, in, in what could have been perceived as an, an appropriating outfit based on what she was wearing. Then she had her hair. Um, so people immediately reacted online and were like, oh, you know, she's, you know, we rock with Adele, but, you know, that's not cool. You know, now she's being credited for rocking this when it's of a certain you know culture and people. But it turns out her boyfriend I don't know if she's still with him, but her boyfriend is a Jamaican musician. So then that leads you but down. But I thought just also the where the she festival. was, the festival, so, that's how people and dress. That's, and that's another thing with cultural appropriation and and blackness. Blackness is different in like Euro blackness is different than American blackness. So things that Amer- black Americans get offended by, Europeans don't. Like back when um H&M did that seg- that that campaign and they had the little boy and he was wearing something like monkey monkey, something monkey and the mom was like y'all i'm not even thinking that like i'm not even concerned about that and she she blatantly said black americans are too sensitive and and i don't know if the dynamic is different in europe because for the most part if you are black in europe you're from somewhere else you're either from the Caribbean or you're from Africa. Um, I, I don't know if a lot of people know. In the 50s and 60s, kind of as a way of reparations, uh, Britain specifically, and I think a couple others, but Britain was a main, you, the United Kingdom was a country that uh, allowed pretty much through visas. It was like, you get a visa, you get a visa. If you can get here, come here. We, because we, my bad. It was a my bad visa. <laughs> they were like, oh, we happen to encourage people putting your people on ships and taking you places. And that's why you are in a not the best position and now are developing nation because we took all your resources. So to make up from that, we will allow you to come to our country. So the exact transcript of, of words from King Henry or Charles or James, whoever was in power at the time. Exactly how we said it. That's how we said it with an accent too. Sorry that we happen to take you and your people on ships without your permission, and enslave you for the betterment of our countries. So we are going to give you visas to come to our country, but we're also going to be mean to you when you get here. Um, Cheerio. Cheerio, teas, and biscuits. Um, So I'm perplexed. (laughs) (laughs) So John Adams. As 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 a first-generation... Ghanaian American, I kind of see blackness differently, um, which is it's evolving. It's evolving. But, you know, I sometimes feel I better identify with Euro Africans than I do with American. Then maybe you African should take American. your hind parts back to Europe. But I've never. I, Actually, I have that, that, I've connected yeah, I connected in Munich. Been, yeah. I've also mm-hmm. connect, Munich. connected in Brussels um, with your child. Uh, but I, I haven't actually lived By there. Force. Actually, there was one point where we had broken up before we got engaged that I was planning on going over I'm to Europe. Telling business like that. Dang. You brought it up. You told me to go back there. I was planning I to say go, go back there and then tell people that we were uh, broken tr- up. People, they know, they remember. Uh, I had I had wanted to go to like Europe somewhere, Italy. Uh, London, France. I was going to say the underpants rhyme, but I didn't. Uh, and we're going to have to continue this into um, next next week. But I do. Maybe I'll actually get to speak next week too. You're not speaking, so you're just. <laughs> I'm just I'm, 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 you 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 are you are rolling, and I am not so stepping in front of the train. What I'm essentially saying is, I think that the dy- the dynamic of offense is different. European blacks in Europe are, I. Th- and I, I can't. I'm not Euro black, um, so or Afro European. I don't know what the proper terminology. Forgive me. Don't come for me, cousins. Um, but I think the perspective is just different. Where it's just like we don't need to get offended by everything. And not saying that we in America get offended by everything, um, but there's a lot of things for us to be offended by. And it's different because there are people who you know, slavery took place here. So the people, the blacks that are here, a majority of them are descendants of people who were marginalized and stolen and 
improperly treated. So it there's a different sensitivity. But we've segued so much. But it makes you we? wonder back to Adele. <laughs> we segue. You now. wonder, you know, if you I if, if a person is white and they like the 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 honorary black card. So, you know, she was wearing a Jamaican bathing suit, like the a Jamaican flag bathing suit. She done dropped her 150 pounds. She's she's not even Adele. She's I didn't Addy. even know. I don't know who it was. I Look, was like, who's this and why she's people She's not even so Adele. Upset? She's Addie. We're either going to call her Addie or Adele, but we can't call her Adele because that's not who she is no more. Um, she's got, you know, she's got her Jamaican boy. So it's like people were mad and then I was like, oh, she's got this Jamaican boyfriend. Not a big deal. And it was just Americans because those in London, I believe the festival takes place in Notting Hill. Um, and, you know, the culture... America is so big, so I feel like a lot of individual cultures, international individual cultures, are not as embraced. Whereas in in London, in Europe, they have big festivals, and these people are coming together and they're celebrating their heritage. So you have, you know, that you're gonna have that white friend who's like, I can get down with the get down. I'm gonna eat the curry goat. I'm gonna eat, you know, the the saltfish critters, like fritters. I'm gonna get in there, um, and I think. That's why the English people are like, we don't, we don't care because this is, this is part of it. This is part of who we are. We celebrate with you. We embrace you. And you have, you have events here. Every, I think at some point in your life, everyone's had a white friend who can, who fits in with, with every, everything everywhere. Like, oh, for me, uh, it was Lindsay. I remember in college, I had transferred from UNC Charlotte to Johnson and Wales, but I still had all my friends at UNC Charlotte, and we were going to a pretty ugly party, which was a it was a Kappa party and an Omega party, and it was myself, it was Lindsay who was white, and it was our friend Shayna, and. It didn't even cross my mind like Lindsay can't handle this party. And guess what? We were up in there and I look over at one point and Lindsay out there. Lindsay married now, so I'm not going to put her business out there. And I'm married too, so I can't put my business out there. But we were um, no, mingling. Please. Go ahead. No, please. Go <laughs> on. We were mingling. I'm not trying to get her in trouble with Percy. We were mingling um, on the what's dance his, floor. What's his name? Who are you dancing with? I don't remember. I want to know, his, I I know, know who I, she danced with, but I can't remember. No, I, I don't and, care about her. She got a husband. I want to know the I name of the man you were dating. I, I wasn't I even dating you then. I want to know his it name. It was the brief window before you and I started dating when you realized you could talk to me. Well, that's know. another conversation. I want to know his name. Uh, ain't no, nobody was even like really thinking about you. Um, it was back when I actually... <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to say that. Um, when what? When I thought you were the gay guy. <laughs> and I was like, y'all, he definitely does not like me. I, I know this for a fact. <laughs> Another episode. So I think a lot of people, a good portion of the population has that black, that white friend that you can take anywhere and they, they just fit in. It, it works. Like you don't have to worry about, are they going to be uncomfortable? They're like, these are my people. These are my people too. So you just wonder how, like, does the card, because you hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, my neighbor is black. My this is black. So, you know, this allows me to come up in here um, to be part of this, to appreciate this. So it's like, what what are the defining parameters of cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation? And when at, at who determines like, OK, now you your appreciation had turned into appropriation or your you're you're simply appreciating and we appreciate you for appreciating us. I'm going to stop because if I fight, like, I'm going to just keep going. So uh, for anybody watching, if you have uh, thoughts or views or comments, please drop those in the comments. We'll be in there this week. Uh, I'm going to make sure that Jessica is the one responding on behalf of Rush Vibe since she has led this entire podcast. Um, but this is uh, this is very, very interesting, an interesting topic for anyone who's been uh, affected by it or, or has been involved in in a case of cultural appropriation, um, my thoughts, like I had, had uh, started to say, is that I think it, it's it's very subjective uh, because when you live in a country like America, I mean, you know, cultures kind of uh, people adopt certain aspects of different cultures probably without even realizing it, just because a lot of things be just are a melting pot in terms of of a country. So uh, I know 
you know, there's it's usually some young black kid who invents whatever new dance that hits social media. But, you know, by and large, a lot of times there may be, um, you know, a, a white girl or, or whoever uh. who gets credit or blows up has the most viral video. Right. Or a corporation may, um, you know, trademark or, or put you know, a, a white face performing the, the dance. And on, it's not just blackness. Disney tried to come for Coco and trademark Dia de, Dia de los Muertes. So I'm just putting that out there. Uh, so it, it, it just depends, you know, on, on, I think it's just, I think the best answer is that it's just subjective. Uh, and it just, it just depends. So, um, a very, very, very good, uh, topic. Very, very passionate i see i enjoyed um, talking to myself <laughs> yeah i i enjoyed listening to you 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 went around you went around, you i'd be segueing yeah shortcuts <laughs> so uh we're gonna wrap here uh maybe we'll continue this next week uh but i i'm kind of scared too to be honest <laughs> i don't know how much longer jessica can talk i uh, about the this. right topic i can keep yeah. i can go Normally, I, I, we, we kind of are equal, or I tend to speak a little bit more, but she definitely carried this one, which I don't necessarily mind because uh, I'm getting ready to go put all this together for uh, for you all to enjoy on tomorrow or today, Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, if you if you stuck with us this long, uh, we appreciate you, uh, and we would just ask that if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to give us a thumbs up and uh, also share with you know any anyone who you feel like we get some value out of us being us out of, out of rushed vibes. Uh, also be sure to uh, connect with us on social media. You should have seen the links pop up at the beginning of the video, but just in case you didn't, I'll go ahead and pop them up now. Um, <clears throat> and also whatever uh, pl- podcast platform you're listening to us on, be it Apple, Spotify, Google, or uh, tune in, I believe that we're on. Uh, just be sure to, you know, leave us a rating and, and leave us a review. Five um, stars. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm actually going to start saying this at the beginning of podcast because um, just in case nobody, you know, people skip around or whatever. Um, because uh, we really we really appreciate seeing the views and interactions that you all give us. But uh, if we get those ratings and, and those reviews on those podcast platforms, that would really help because that's how Apple and Spotify determine algorithms in terms of what shows show up as suggestions based on reviews and ratings. So. Um, if you enjoy watching as you enjoy vibing with us, just be sure to, you know, do those two small things and then that'll help us grow the vibe tribe. The um, vibe you can support tribe. the channel in another way. Uh, we're also on cash app, uh, dollar sign R U S H D V I B E S. Uh, we appreciate anything that you're willing to offer. Um, whew. that's it. You sure? I think so. I okay. think I hit all of my, all of my notes. Sure? Um, I had to be sure to get them out. I were, we're running up on an hour and twenty minutes. Ooh, so, somebody uh, was talking. Somebody was somebody was was yapping. Um, we just want to reiterate how much we appreciate everybody. Uh, this is definitely our uh, this this podcast. This brand is 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 our baby, and it's evolving on a daily basis. So we appreciate anybody who's kind of you know jumped on in in the beginning and kind of seeing this thing through with us. We we really appreciate you, and uh, we hope that you know, we're providing. Uh, <laughs> value if, if not just uh um humor uh but we do also do cover some serious topics as well uh, since we're on episode 10 uh we are getting very close to our very first guest episode we've got some fire guests lined up uh, we've got some themes um you know that that we're gonna that we're gonna hit in terms of interviewing guests who all fit into that particular theme so that's coming up very soon i'd say within the next you know five to five to seven episodes five to seven episodes so um definitely going to look forward to switching it up a little bit and having some really exciting and fantastic people who are local to us uh come on and share the stories and, and, and share you know what what it is that makes them them so stay tuned for that anything else i put up our valentine's decorations because our tree is still up so i won i told y'all i was gonna do it so you can see behind david's head i've got gel stickers with hearts um, and then over here, which you can't see, uh, I, w- I got some little banners and like we'll, uh, faux wood. We'll, we'll drop some photos on And on then the Christmas media. tree has Valentine's decor. I didn't think she was actually going to go through with I it. I did it. But she did it. And you know where I went? The dollar store. Spent my hard-earned money on 
cheap decorations. Oh, but, but it looks, you know what? He appreciated it. No, it looks it looks good. He uh, I never, I didn't think that she would actually go through with the trees. So I did it, looks, it. It looks nice. So you know, and I, I went back to the dollar store, <laughs> and they had them Easter decorations. So y'all know, it's about to be on and popping. About to throw Jesus, baby Jesus, on the tree. <laughs> you mean crucified Jesus? Well, crucified Jesus. Excuse me. I was going for the peachy version. All right. Um, well, if there's nothing else, um, we will catch you guys next week. Remember, every Wednesday, uh, episodes drop on your p- favorite podcast platform of choice and YouTube. So we will see you there. Uh, please be safe. We're still in a pandemic. So wash your hands, wear a mask, social distance. Stay home. Stay home. Be safe. Be blessed. I'm Dave. I'm Jeff. This is Rush Vibes. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too far. Stop me now.